A few weeks ago, I put this GPU, this RTX 3080, into a tank of dielectric coolant and experimented with immersion cooling. It worked awesome at first. The temperatures were great. This little radiator had plenty of heat rejection capacity for one graphics card. The whole thing was really quiet, and I liked looking at it when I came into the office at first. Well, Engineered Fluid's Electrocool Dielectric Coolant has a material compatibilities list, a list that I sort of ignored when I set up this first little test unit. What I didn't realize was incompatible materials get destroyed by this stuff pretty quickly. I had it all set up in this plastic fish tank I got from Amazon. I don't know what kind of plastic it was, but it was the wrong stuff. After maybe a month and a half of contact with this fluid, it got really brittle, and of course while I was in Minnesota on a trip, Sarah called me to let me know that I was now immersion cooling my whole desk and a lot of the floor. What a mess. Anyway, now we all get to learn the steps of removing a GPU from an immersion cooling setup and getting it back to work in the air like NVIDIA initially intended. Who's texting? First, EC110 is an oil-based fluid, so this card was never just gonna dry off. You need to use some sort of solvent. I had a can of DS100 solvent from my ASIC immersion setup I've been experimenting with, so that's what I used. I just put the GPU in a bucket and dumped solvent over it into the bucket. Then I took a second bucket, put the graphics card in there, and dumped the solvent from the first bucket into the second bucket. Repeated that a few times until I was pretty sure that wherever I could get this solvent to go, it went. And I'm confident that if not the coolant, then surely the solvent would have ruined the thermal pads and paste that helped transfer heat off of the card and into the heat sinks. So the next step was to get this thing apart and replace all of that, and clean off whatever was still oily inside. These cards are pretty easy to take apart. It's all tiny Phillips screws. Just get a tiny Phillips screwdriver set. This kit is from iFixit. I'll leave a link in the description. Then just start taking screws off wherever you can find them. You might want to think about taking a video or take pictures as you get deeper into the card. The screws aren't all the same size and length, and I ended up having a little bit of trial and error when I was putting it back together. Anyway, got the fan shroud off. These four screws on the back of the card are all that holds on this heatsink. But the community at large has figured out that in order to get memory temps down on air cooling, it helps a lot to get some thermal pads on the back side of the memory modules as well as on the front of them. So I took the rest of these screws off to get the back plate off also. Turns out there was already some pads on there and a heat pipe. Side note, I am no expert computer builder or anything. If you want like perfect measurements and really technical information, there's a lot of other guys making really good videos about that. I just cut these things up and slapped them on where I felt like they should go. But I do know what memory chips look like, and I know that that's what we're primarily trying to cool down. Anyway, next step was to get all of the old pads and paste off of the card. I used this little blue plastic wand thing from the iFixit kit and some rubbing alcohol to scrape off and clean up the surfaces pretty good. Then I got out some new thermal pads and went to work. These little chips on the side here had their own heat sink from the frame, so they got some two millimeter pads. These pads don't have to be one continuous piece. You can chop them up into little pieces and they'll be fine. I cut up some more for the main memory modules. The back side of this little black plate makes contact with them. Then the main heatsink sits on this plate, so the back of the plate has some pretty good indications of where you need to put the pads. They have little, little riser things. Before getting everything all sticky and greasy with paste, I flipped it over and put some real thick 3mm thermal pads on the back side of the memory modules. I don't know what those other smaller chips are, but on the front side they had thermal pads when I took it apart, so I cut up some more and made a little thermal pad sandwich out of those things, just to give them as much heat mitigation as I could fit in there. On the front side, I put pads all over the place, and if there's any experts watching, you may foresee what was gonna happen when I turn this thing on. Anyway, then I smeared on some thermal paste. Yeah, I used too much thermal paste, what are you gonna do? I put the heatsink back on, I put the back plate back on, took a quick video call from Blake at Musk Miners, my trusted US hardware supplier for ASICs. I'll get those helium miners sent over to you. It's amazing. I'm gonna turn you this way because I'm actually filming right now doing this GPU thing. Blake from Musk Miners. <laughs> he really did call me during this. This is not like a sponsored spot or anything. Plugged in the fans, put the shroud back on, and quickly threw together actually this motherboard to test it out on. Everything fired up as expected, but the GPU fan started running suspiciously fast at first. Then, as soon as I started mining, the memory junction temperature was fine, actually better than fine, better than normal, but the hotspot temperature shot up to 110 degrees Celsius and the card shut itself off. Actually, the whole computer shut itself off. Well, that was unexpected, so clearly I did something wrong. So, I took the card back apart. And, lesson learned. This little area around the outside of the GPU does not get pads. They were stopping the heatsink from making direct contact with the GPU. So, I took those pads off, and I'm not sure if that area is supposed to get anything at all, but I smeared a bunch of thermal paste on there anyway. Put the heat sink back on, put the shroud back on, and fired it up. This time, everything was golden. In fact, just by changing the pads on the back, now, while mining at about 92 mega hash, the memory junction temperatures on this card, which normally hover right around 100 degrees Celsius, were just right at an icy cool 90 degrees. Long story short, if you try immersion cooling for your GPUs and then change your mind, or if you destroy your whole setup by using the wrong tank and pump and lines at a triple-double, before going back to air cooling, take the card apart, scrape off all the old thermal stuff, and put in 
in new thermal stuff. If you have this model of this card and you want these temperatures, this is a GeForce RTX 3080, non-LHR. Well then look at this, you can just do what I did. Unfortunately, all the different manufacturers also make their own heat sinks and so stuff will be in different places. For instance, my liquid cooled 3080s have completely different looking heat sinks and no back plates at all. I'm gonna be turning on memberships on this channel. I'm not gonna hold back any of my normal content, but I will occasionally throw up a live camera just for the members while I'm filming the like doing of the videos. And then I'll have a TV set up for comments and stuff so I can respond to what you're all saying. Sometimes these projects get a little expensive and if you have a lot of extra money and you want to help this channel, well then a, become a member. Otherwise, join my Discord, link in the description.